to the uh, Hill County Commissioner's meeting. I'd like to invite you all to join us in the board's meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. second on this uh, meeting is a special session on June 30th, and I remembered after reading through it, it was all for nothing. All in favor, please say aye. a request to me that we uh, take in a gentleman here just a second ahead of time. Kent, you want to take a seat up here by Kent? Be just fine. Uh, Mr. Doolin out here, would you care to go first? Uh, we welcome you to the commission meeting.
commissioners or from the nine one one director regarding our concerns? I did an investigation on them. I just didn't reply to them. My apologies. Okay. So did you say you asked to be on the agenda today? I talked to him last night by the Oh, okay. I was going to say, I don't want to receive that. Uh, so I, I guess my question would be uh, regarding the letter. So um, back in 2018, the uh, county fire departments began working on a plan that would involve automatic mutual aid for structure fires. So currently, if your house is on fire, call 911, dispatch would send whichever fire department is responsible for your area. All of our departments are volunteer fire departments, so how many people show up is kind of dependent on who's at work and who's not sick and who's not at a kid's sporting event. So what? many departments or many areas do is they incorporate automatic mutual aid. So if there's a house fire in Delphi, Delphi Fire Department would obviously be paged. And at the same time, Camden Fire Department would automatically be paged. So there's no delay in getting extra apparatus and extra equipment to the scene, ultimately to help with uh, rescues or mitigating any of the damage caused by the fire. So uh, back in 2018, the departments and 911 that this would be the way to better serve the community. Uh, maps uh, were drawn up, uh, jurisdictional boundaries were drawn up, and were supposed to be put into the CAD system, and that would be an automatic function. So if you called 911 and reported a house fire, the CAD would tell dispatch what to send. Um, I was not involved in that process. Uh, it was my understanding that that process was pretty complicated because it was really specific on what units you needed to call or how many times you had to page somebody. Uh, so jumping forward to October 14th of last year, uh, we held another meeting, including uh, the dispatch supervisor, and decided that we would just identify one department that would be who responded to a particular area. And then mainly it would be the fire department closest, obviously, um, and those two departments would be paged, the primary department To do that, uh, we uh, colored, we took a big county highway map, <coughs> colored pencils pretty much, and colored in who we wanted to go to our department. And, and the 911 director took that back. <coughs> uh, it was our understanding that that was supposed to be then turned over to, uh, I think it's ID Networks, I'm not exactly positive on that, the CAD company. They were going to overlay our hand-colored map into the um, CAD system so it would automatically tell dispatch to your call. Um, since then, there has not been any movement on uh, the implementation of the automatic mutual aid that we as fire chiefs are aware of. Uh, we received an email from the 911 director on October 11th that said uh, she had spent the last couple weeks training new hires haven't been able to work on this 100% of the time. She did say that uh, she's been focusing on the map the last couple days. When we went to add new layers, we found that the layers weren't matching it and would have affected uh, what was drawn out. So um, she says she has a tentative deadline set for November 20th, 2020, for it to be functioning in the CAD. But at this point, it is in the hands of two other vendors. The only other communication we had from that was on December 7th, 2020. Uh, the fire chiefs received an email from the 911 director. It said, hopefully this will be the last update. I've assigned new ESN layers that will be requested. So what date was that? On December 7th. Okay. I now have to go through each one and update them within the layers. Uh, this took longer than expected. Uh, the agent working on was sick, but again, hopefully this will be the last update. So uh, the reason that we are asking today is because we have a, a chief's meeting Wednesday, and we'd like to have some type of an update on what the plan is moving forward on this automatic mutual aid. Okay. Okay. 
Again. John Lazar, of course, to ask Kathy. Yeah. Again, yeah. Yeah. Kathy, would you like to report on this for us? Thank you. Um, so there are 26, I'm sorry, 25 pages that I have to go through and take old ESNs and give them new ESNs. It takes me a day and a half with no interruptions to get through a page because I have multiple systems I have to use. I also have to cover dispatch when there's shortages. I was out sick for a month um, due to a hospitalization of nine days. Um, so it does take time. I'm one person. I don't have an assistant. I can only do it from my desk. I can't do it from dispatch. I've never delayed response or been negligent in my duties in delaying response. Um, it takes time. I've had no assistance from the fire departments. Um, in fact, I didn't get a map from his predecessor until he became chief. Not calling anybody out, it is what it is. So. Um, so the purpose of this is so that, if, say there's a house fire in Delta, automatically cameras will be called out, right? It depends on where it's at. It depends on where it's at. Works. So like if it's up north, So if it's down in your area, you probably have, since it's less people, you probably have Flora. We have Flora, Cutler, Burlington. Right, they would all probably be coming in at the same time if that's the way it looks on their map. Um, I think what the issue is, is when she sent that through to the vendors, we're going to load the totem pole probably because yeah. our system's old. It's just not like you can't scan that and put it right in the system. Okay. But I understand each, I understand both sides because you want to mutual aid yeah. because it is safety and hazard but then again we don't have the manpower in this guy because she's been short three or four people and she covers and she's got to enter those one at a time so every property you have to go in and change each little thing in the system every property every property let, let me under, <coughs> try to understand it so i probably should know how this works better but i don't if I live out here by, uh, well, just north of town here a little ways. So I call in and I say, Jimmy, you help me out on this too. If I call in and say, I got a fire in my barn, okay? And I give the address. Does it just automatically call, a, when that address is plugged in, does it automatically just call the Delphi? It automatically shows Delphi Fire if it's in their jurisdiction. Say that again. It just shows Delphi Fire Department if it's in their jurisdiction. As of right now. And it calls them. No. We do the calls. We dispatch. Okay, so my question would be, how difficult would it be for when you get a call that you know it's in the Delphi area, or you know where it is, to just go ahead and call the other fire department? Sure. Why can't you do that? Well, we could, but I mean, if it's talking about up north, that's a phone call to White County. Right. And if we're trying to gather information, it's going to be delayed for White County, as far as my cell fire is concerned, or Brookston, or whoever we're calling. That's not possible. It is possible to be, you know, trying to see it. If my barn's on fire, those are what I want you to spend the time to get. It's not a matter of not spending the time, it's a matter of how much time it takes to gather information. A lot of times we'll see where the fire is, get basic information, we'll go ahead and dispatch it, then we gather more information. <laughs> you know, exposures, things like that. And it also depends, like, if Delphi's responded, what are you doing to make the the assumption says, hey, this is a big barn just because he knows the area, call, call this fire department and have them in route also. And what he's wanting is like, it'll pop up on the system, go ahead and page this other, says automatically. So you'll have the dual tone to get more apparatus of people coming. Right now it's just the one. I mean, there is some mutual aid, I think, in there, but not like so the, the, last, the last house fire that we had in Delphi, we had six people. So uh, sometimes if a chief or someone that's familiar with the area isn't available, you're waiting until somebody actually gets there before they determine that they want extra help to show up. We want the extra help to show up quickly because if we only have six people, why 
one's got a drought tanker, one's got a drought pump truck, at least two or three people that are able to fight the fire. Um, there's a lot of NFPA and OSHA requirements that we are really hard pressed yeah. to meet because of the lack of manpower in those kind of situations. So in the letter that um, the fire chiefs sent, we had uh, five questions. steps taken to, or have the dispatchers been notified that this plan is being implemented? And if so, have they started working on uh, you know, training or familiarization that they're even coming up more than one department at the same time? Um, so let, let's just take that. Just take it. Yes, sir. All of my staff is aware that we're going through this process currently, and they've played a vital role in offering suggestions, complaints, things like that. Okay, the next question. Yes. Uh, one of the questions which has been addressed is why is it taking so long for this procedure to be implemented? I don't think that there's a fire chief on the, in the association that doesn't understand that Cassie's trying to get this done and that it does take a, a lot of time to do. But is uh, part of the problem Has ID Network said that this would be something that we could do with this CAD, and then all of a sudden, you know, that's not exactly how it's working. So, is part of the problem ID Network's? No, part of the problem is I have to go through each ESM layer for each address and make that change. Then I have to submit it to the CAD vendor for them to implement it in the map. Okay. And I also have to submit it to the BTH, who does our current mapping system for them to make the change because I do have staff that does not like the current mapping system or does not like the ID network mapping. So they use the, the old mapping, the WTH. So I have to go to both vendors to give them that information. I don't think I ever said once that CAD couldn't do this. What I said was that they couldn't do each individual apparatus two or three years ago and that's why we changed it to one specific department. It shouldn't be my dispatcher's responsibility to know which apparatuses need to go to which fires. Well, really, We're we, not I, trying to. We enact. agree with you on that, which is why we changed right. it to identify one department. We did the map back in October. Um, so there's no argument about which apparatus needs to go to which fires. We just want another department page when we have a structured fire in that area to be represented. Um, and then, uh, because some of the questions were addressed um, or answered. Uh, the last one would be uh, if there's a projected implementation date and if the actual colored map that we provided uh, to dispatch on October 14th, if that is something that we can use in the meantime to start implementing automatic mutual aid just using the map that's color coded and identifies which department we want to use. You're saying no. Or no. That would take way too much time. I have way too many new staff members for them to turn and look at a map and try to figure out where that is on the map. Okay. When our CAD can tell us exactly who because it is. Because when we page the fire department, we're um, paging, we're letting officers know, and they're also letting EMS know. And if it's something major, then they're letting Mike know. <coughs> then if it's utilities, they're letting the utilities know. There's five five pages already, plus your mutual aid, plus you still got to answer all, everybody that, that calls in. So the, the deputy's saying, hey, the address is such and such. Um, you've got six or seven fire departments all calling in, going in route. Then you've got the medics saying they're in route. I mean, it's a complicated situation. I would encourage any of you to come set a day in dispatch and see what it's like in there. It's not as easy as you guys think it is especially when you have an event like that going on. Yeah, but also the other thing is each fire department that's responsible for an area, they get three tones. We have to tone them three different times okay. for the same incident. So I understand they have a system that actually projects that onto their cell phone. Most of the pagers have repeats on them, so they can just pick a button and re repeat the address instead of us having to tone it three times. That's also time consuming. So I guess, um, just in conclusion, 
back to the, uh, uh, feel like our frustration is based upon, you know, we were given a tentative deadline set by the 911 director on November 20th, 2020. Um, in the, then again in December, like with an email that says, this is hopefully the last update as it's nearly completed. Um, we sent the letter to the commissioners, the board, and the 911 director in March, and we're at the April meeting. We still don't have a possible deadline. Again, this does make it easier for the fire departments to know that they have automatic mutilate or automatic help coming to a structured fire. But ultimately, this is a huge benefit for each of the people that we represent in our communities. It gets them the assistance they need to hopefully save their house, to hopefully save their loved ones, and it's just very important at this point. We're just looking for an approximate timeline. What you are uh, requesting what the mutual fire chief has requested, I think is a very good thing. I think that this is a, a great idea. Now, until she can get this all done, is there any in, in between place we can get to? Like, okay, if there's a fire in the Cutler area, that you've jumped about three times, we've got a I'm assuming sometimes the fire chief can't get there. I mean, they're, they're, you're human too. There are fires you can't get to. And so, if you're not there, is there a subordinate that takes over the command? Right, yeah, there's, there's a chain of command. I think to answer your question, <coughs> in the meantime, for the meeting to do the meeting in the middle of the meantime, it would be using the map that was provided. And when time permits, they can look at that map and you know, send fire, some cover fire, you know, uh, sooner than waiting for somebody to get out scene and request those services. Yeah. So when the tone goes out and says you, you know the districts, and you know who you need, um, until she gets this implemented, can you go ahead and say, hey, let's go ahead and get this in route? That's yeah, that's what we do regularly. It's just for those situations when somebody's not available to make that decision. So you're the only one on the, your yeah, department that knows this? No, we have people that do that. Many of the departments do it. We're looking for those things. The house fires are coming in the right. middle of the night. Uh, when you know you're waiting for somebody up there, trying to get that stuff coming out to you to help you, that those pagers go off at the same time. You see, sometimes you're still on the phone with these people that are in your house on fire, trying to get more information to relay to everybody. So if you take the time because you said you're just about to turn around with that map yeah. and try to find it, how long do you look on here to find something? Yeah. Uh, that's I think that's an issue to me. It, is. it would so slow you way down. Yeah. 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 And you know, there's only two of us, most of the time there's two of us in there. Right now we're short staff, so there's times there's just one. And it would be almost impossible to deal with a PMS call, get up, check the fire district, and send the fire department to the house. So to answer your question, I can't give you a deadline. So we just need to work together to make sure we do have the right people getting get in there. Um, at your next meeting, just make sure the the chiefs, the, you know, whoever's going to respond to the fire first should have enough knowledge, unless it's a newbie. I've been on the fire department before, so I know how it works. Everybody goes in it's like <coughs> um, I think both sides need to learn it, but you guys are going to know more than this does on who you want. And does that make sense? Oh yeah, that's how that's how we. Made the map was right. Who we want, right. and you know, you, you got to have your guys help the dispatch. Say, hey, um, I didn't hear this tone go off. Could you please go ahead and tell them whoever you need? So I'd rather spend the money on fuel to get somebody there and disregard them than have them still sitting in bed and a five more minute wait. 
I really don't you know, understand that. But I think your map and your system is a great idea. But being short staffed in there and what everything goes on in that place, I, I see both sides. I really do. So it, I, it seems like the best, not to interrupt you, but it seems like the best solution right now is that we're going to keep working on this and then and, uh, each fire chief and his subordinates is going to have to call back in and say, okay, call Cam from them out or call whoever it has to be. Because I know, for example, if it was in Burroughs, probably most of Burroughs Fire Department know about everybody out there. So if they'd say, it's, you know, Clyde Jones' barn, they're going to know where it is right away. But the people sitting there don't know who it is. So they got to turn around, like Steve says, and try to find it on the map. That's going to be very tedious to do. Yes? I'd just like to make a little comment. Since that letter was sent, I have received um, a message from another fire chief that he is not in support of that letter being sent. Um, it doesn't matter who it is. But for them to say that all of the fire chiefs have felt this way, that is not the response that I've got. Um, one of the suggestions that I'd like to make to the fire departments is per their policy, not every person needs to mark and route. We don't not need every to know. Person needs what? Our policy states that only an apparatus and one personal vehicle needs to mark and route. We just had a fire last week where every single person that responded marked and out of the radio and that's what takes time oh. i need you to tell me you want this department and that you're in route that's all that matters i need to know that apparatuses are in route and we're not getting that either so just uh to address the uh, first point there was um, every chief that signed this letter that's got their signature was sent the letter by email, responded, made corrections, was in agreement with it. Uh, so if there's phone calls afterwards and says, hey, look, I don't really support that. That's, you know, this was sent out after communication with each and every chief that's on the association. Again, that's five years of the meeting on Wednesday. So if there's someone that's not in favor of it, they're more than welcome to, to bring it up. Um, as far as uh, several units marking the route to the fires. Um, we can try to address that at the Delphi level. Otherwise, that's up to the chiefs or the other departments. To well, when I was dispatching in the fire department, once you went in route, everybody else had to go to a different channel to communicate so it don't go over the air. And only one person was supposed to call dispatch on the main radio. I don't know if that's still the protocol or not. Because when you got 15 fire departments and had need a hose, well, it comes across the red radio instead of back and forth like a walk and talk. And you know, then they hear that and they're, they're wondering, what? What? I mean, it, it, it's a big confusion. Yeah, I've been on both sides, so it's. Well, it seemed to me like the, the, we've got a great idea here. The last, but the last thing we need is contention in the whole thing. Well, we need is cooperation. got to work towards that and, and Cassie's got to try to find time or find somebody who can do it. We, we may have to hire somebody actually just to put all these in. Uh, so how many, out of the 25 pages that were originally provided, how many are left? How many you got left, Ms. Cassie? I am only on page four of 25. So we're Yes. Sorry, can I add? Last week I talked to you guys. I, I helped in dispatch at times. Um, when that letter was sent out, um, Cassie had mentioned she went out sick. She did not see that letter until she came back to the table. Um, I, however, saw the letter. Jim saw the letter. And we did ask her about, I, I asked her personally about a few things on that letter so that we could address it if we needed to. I talked to Steve directly and he said we're going to postpone for right now. Um, so we said, so we'll keep things moving forward. Can we do this? And, you know, give some, give some answers now. We said postpone 
for right now, um, which was fine. Um, but I also, the fire chief that she was talking about, I talked with him directly too. What she's stating, he told me as well. So he said, I hadn't read the letter. I'm not in the green. I mean, what are you telling me? I'm not in the green. I just so that it's not just a back and forth. He told me the same thing. Again, I'm not going to name names, but told me the same thing when I had read the letter and she hadn't seen it yet. Um, I tried to try to help out as much as I possibly could when she was out sick. I tried, you know, and he told me the same thing. And I do think you're right. It's, it's a great it's a great opportunity to get these things moving forward. We need to work together. However, I told you guys, I think in the last meeting, that I stepped in during the shortage. The reason I stepped in during the shortage was because I kept watching Cassie do a day shift, a night shift. A night, you know, and she was back and forth. She was constantly in dispatch. I mean, she was basically killing herself and ended up in the hospital for nine days, like she just said. I, she can't do the job from dispatch. She has to do it from her, from her desk. So she's been there since October, which or October, November, since the letter was sent out from the last update. So I think the frustration is that uh, the county highway operating without a record for months, right? And the they got plowed and were concerned they're still addressed. It's, it's not that she was out of the office, it's that we haven't gotten a response until today, even saying she's not in the office, we can address this when she gets back. It's just been no answer. We sent it to the 911 board, we sent it to all these people that could have responded, we just haven't gotten a response. And then, you know, we, the emails that we had gotten were that were close, were close. There's 25 pages, it takes a day and a half of uninterrupted to do each page. Since October, we've done four pages. So that's that's where we're frustrated. Well, if you wish, then I'll take on my spot because I, I go to respond and I can do this basis. So to me, you, the fire chief, I apologize for not responding and saying, hey, we're working on it, which we should have done, and I didn't. Um, from here on forward, we're going to try to get it done. She has short staff still, way down three. I'm currently down two. Two? Two and three. Two and three, again. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think that fire chief made original contact with me, that Cassie's phone. And he gave me that information about he was not supportive. So, I'm just, just, just saying. saying. We're just going to the that on that. Yeah. So the, 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 the other, the other, the other, the other, the other Man, did you get the email I sent out saying that the gas was unavailable and I would be taking bring the concerns to me? Okay. You did? I didn't hear. So Okay. Uh, I think that's all
She does. And she was working the same hours I was putting in. Thank you, Joe. You're okay. I think we've answered as best we can. It's in the process. We're going to keep looking at it. And we're going to move to the next item. for a bridge rehabilitation on uh, Cameron Road Bridge, number 12. Uh, it's going to be rehabilitated this year. Um, advertising dates April 28th and May 5th. <coughs> Opening May 17th. Okay. Um, if we need a motion on that, gentlemen. So what does that mean? I guess I'm not done okay, yeah. that. Yeah. We, we went through a lot of bridges back then. Few years ago, but Steve missed out on that the last four years. So, what was your question? So, what's that in detail on what is? Uh, mm -hmm. the rehabilitating the deck uh, and guardrail on Chang Road. I think it's 800. Fairmont? Fairmont. Fairmont, yeah. Bridge 12. And what all of you envision having done to that bridge? What, is, what does it need? Um, the, 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 um, Redecking the bad, you're just patching the bad portions of the deck itself. Um, you still have new guardrail on both ends. Uh, you might remember if there's a big drop off. Uh, yeah. uh, over a thousand yeah. drop off. Yeah, there's a 30 year drop off around that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to go ahead and advertise. So I have a motion and a second to advertise for bridge rehabilitation. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passed. That bridge is getting some age on it. Uh, that was built uh, after the covered bridge fell in oh. down there, which was about uh, between a quarter and a half mile west. It's, a, it's on a different alignment from what they're covered yeah. in. You had to just turn 90 degrees to get onto the covered bridge right here. And a semi went over it at about 53 or 54 and broke it. And it took it about three days to roll over and fall in. But uh, I can remember as a little boy standing there holding my dad's hand and looking off over the edge there. And what seemed like a huge cliff, now it's 20 feet, but uh, that bridge laid down in the water down there. Mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, I mean, it's early 50s, early half of the yeah. 50s. Well, talk, talking to the inspection engineer, um, structurally it's sound. Good. It's just uh, the, the deck itself needs to be some new rehabilitation on it. Well, I was over in the last week and I was looking at that deck on there thinking we need to, we need to do something. Okay, go ahead to the next item, Ken. Um, I have. Uh, Recommendations to award for the materials bid that was opened last week. Uh -huh. um, I have a whole <coughs> bunch of them. You want me to read through each one of them, or should I, can I just give it to the back? Uh, if you could just give us a copy, that'd be fine. Yeah, I've got Good. Mm -hmm. You can have that. Okay. Yeah, we can get it after the reading. Okay. Okay. I'm done. Uh, do you, have you had, I know you, you had an opportunity to do everything over there you want to do. Is our painting equipment to paint a stripe down the middle of the road, is it, uh, we haven't done it for several years. Uh, you, would you check on that for me? I will check on that. I, yeah, I, I'm not involved with that part yet right now. We're good. Uh, regrading the gravel roads, uh, getting ready for our chicken seal program. Which should be after the gravel roads? Chicken seal. Getting ready for the chicken seal sure. program. We're, 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 uh, I'm getting a lot of people, though, on the Cutler Burlington Road, four, uh, 500 South, okay. that are, I think they've gotten together, and I'm getting a lot of calls on, there's an area through there that's very dangerous, where it's like this, and turns, and, and uh, we used to have, we used to have it locked, 
down the center, which okay. helped a lot. Uh, but we paid it since then, you know, for the life of Right. Yeah. So uh, I would like you to put a okay. check on that. Uh, can you give me a list of anything that you've got for the request for striking? Uh, okay, that's the only one I've got. So okay. I don't know if you've got one that's got any for sure. I know when I sat on council, well, uh, in the last gentleman asked for money for pain and it was denied. Denied money for pain? Twenty thousand. Is that why we have a pain for paralysis? But that's been, I don't know, six years ago. Somebody's going to get killed on that road, and has in the past, because people don't have any sense. They'll go right up the center of the, where they can't see anybody. Uh -huh. It depends on the driver. <laughs> Uh -huh. No, 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 no. There's just probably a mile and a half to go as the strike. Yeah. Do we need to make a, a vote on his recommendation on the, on the asphalt materials and bid? Uh, Do we have to vote on that? Ted? Yes, you really should. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's why you've got yeah, the right. recommendation. Uh -huh. <coughs> So bring our motion here, Ted, what we should be doing. Well, we need to move on well, the pick first. Can I, uh, my recommendation is to award the items as highlighted on the attached sheet. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Right. Can I make a motion? Somebody make a motion. To well, how do you know who's going? On the top. The top. The top. Yes. The top. Just about everybody has something. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve recommendations from, from Kent, our highway superintendent, to the paper presented. Okay. To award to yeah, include to award uh, the contracts as as presented. As presented. Yeah, that's my motion. Thanks, Ted. Yeah. Second that. Okay. So we've got a motion and a second to award contracts as presented by Kent. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Pass. <clears throat> aye, aye. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Uh -huh. uh, next item up is uh, Kristen Wong. Yeah, there she is. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh. Good. Good to know. Yeah. So our waste management contract is up August 1st. I put out for a couple bids, and as soon as Waste Management found out that we were considering canceling the contract, uh -huh. this is what they came up with. No contract until December of 2022, no price increase, and it's about $15, $16 less a ton. A ton? Isn't that amazing? You threaten to move away and no contract? So there's no contract. Yeah. We can reevaluate in December of 2022, um, and no price increase. Well, if there's no contract, we could reevaluate the whole way through. Right. If, if we're not getting what we need, we can. I would prefer to stay with waste management just because they're pretty much the only go-to people right now, uh -huh. and the reliability. And I have a really good working relationship with my representative, right. so we talk weekly. Um, I did get another quote or a bid from a gentleman named out of Waste King out of Lafayette. Um, he's a little cheaper, but they're, they, it's a 48 hour. So if I would call, if I'm full, it's 48 hours before you can come get me. So you. So he's a smaller company. Right. And so waste management can come the next day. Which is important, especially through the summer. Right. Especially if you need to change the price for a Saturday. Right. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to stay with waste management. Okay. <coughs> motion second to stay with waste management. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your work on that. Yeah. Thanks. No complaints lately. You're done good. Great. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sheriff. Morning, gentlemen. I have a few things here this morning for you. Must have uh, killed a tree. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, I did my All right. First thing, 
passing out a quote. Um, this is our most recent, and if you'll pay particular attention, I guess, on the bottom line of Thank you. page two, or excuse me, top of page two, your quote. This would, uh, this is part two, if you will, related to our sewage lines at the jail. Uh, this, uh, as you see on page one, the, the scope of the work would involve an epoxy coating on five main branch lines, which branch off of the two lines that we just had the coating uh, completed. Um, you will note this does not include the finger lines. Uh, I guess I, I've looked at our system as we would with a larger sewage type system like a tree. It has several branches to it. But this would be the five main branch lines coming off the two main lines. Um, the additional cost, just so you know up front, uh, not only roughly 65000 to have this work done, the facility uh, would be without water for a week for this process, and so therefore we would have to move inmates again for a week. Um, fortunately, we still have our brothers and sisters in White County who are still willing to come on board and assist us in holding our inmates. As of this morning, we're 17, after what our actual population is. Um, if we stay at that level, then we can, we can work with that. Um, but, um, this particular quote, uh, I want to, uh, I would like to get moving on this as soon as reasonably possible and uh, get this process completed. Uh, the way this process was explained to me, it's, it's very similar to what we just went through, uh, but this is uh, the simple title that, that I was uh, advised of was called splatter lighting. And what this would involve, these are two inch lines, the way I understand it, and they would have a, like a rotating brush or some kind of a fix.